Good morning, everyone. You're welcome to Ask the Pediatrician's Life. Okay.
Good morning, everyone. You're welcome to Ask the Pediatricians Live. Today, we're having an open house and it um, promises to be very exciting. Dr. Bimzola Boyede, our pediatric consult consultant, will be here to answer all your questions. But, but before I call her in, I'd like you to share the video, tell you, invite your friends, share with everyone, to come ask any question they have for um, our pediatric consultants. So we'll say good morning to Dr. Boyede this morning. Good morning, Dr. Boyede. You're welcome to the show. Yeah, good morning, Vera. Good morning, Ask the Pediatricians community. And thank you to every one of you that already has joined us. I can see so many of you already uh, saying your good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And uh, once again, like Vera said, kindly share the video and um, so that we can have more people join us as well. And you can drop your questions. So, and it's an open house, so you can ask any question as much as possible <laughs> on child health issues. And then we'll try and answer them. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Okay, Dr. Berry, you're welcome. Um, all the way from California, you're here today to answer our questions. Before we go into what we're here for today, Dr. Berry, would you want to tell us about your stay at the Facebook headquarters? Well, let me say congratulations to you first, and I'm sure everyone would want to give you a congratulatory message. So you can turn in your messages now. Um, Dr. Boyede was just um, given fellowship by the Facebook um, the Facebook group. She's presently at the Facebook headquarters for the um, FCLP 2018 um, meetup. So Dr. Boyede, many congratulations to you. Thank you for everything you do for the world. You see, you've made, you're, you're making the world a very beautiful place for everyone. And we are particularly excited to be associated with you. So we say congratulations to you again, and um, we'd like to hear one or two words from you. You've been so inspiring in the past um, few days, and um, I must tell you, you've inspired us greatly. So talk to everybody who want to hear from you, ma'am. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Vera. I really want to thank all of you for the uh, good wishes, for your comments, for your likes, for the love. Uh, I really see it as a great privilege to be one of the few uh, leaders chosen by Facebook for the Facebook Community Leadership Program, which is the first time ever Facebook is doing that. And that's because they are beginning to realize the power of community and that people, you know, using the technology of Facebook are doing a lot of good things all over the world, bringing people together, and making so much impact. Uh, then I must tell you, these past four days have been so inspiring for me. I have mm -hmm. been really, really inspired. You know, you think you are doing so much in your little <laughs> <laughs> Thank you're doing you for so that. Much in your corner, but then you go to the world and you see people doing lovely things. You see huge fellows. These are uh, young adults below 18 years and yet they're really making so much impact already yeah. at that young age and then you see people doing things from from pakistan from indonesia from every corner of the world even people that can't speak english uh and they used to use interpreter from japan and we can see all of us connecting together and it is yeah. it is it's so amazing. I mean, the, so much inspiring stories. And Facebook themselves, uh, 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 leadership and the teams, they are quite impressed with all the stories of what people have been able to use this tech technology to do. And it's so, uh, I have been quite inspired just being in Facebook headquarters. And even the Facebook editors and their team too, they are quite inspiring. You know, the way they do things. I mean, it's just, there's so much there. So, but it's just a good opportunity for me to learn about leadership and to also stay with mm -hmm. other uh, people, <clears throat> excuse me, and to be able to uh, 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 learn from them and for them to learn from me. Uh, it's just been wonderful. And I, and I think this is a story we should be telling the world because like I was saying, one of the write up, I, I see a lot of negativity, uh, these bad news here, yeah. money, human, yeah. you know, yeah. but you know, there are lots of 
do things people are also doing all over the world but the 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 news the mass media they don't tell us about those things they just want to tell us about yeah. the negative things but negative. i can tell you yeah. so many stories of people who are doing really in amazing job amazing things using technology i mean it's so amazing and i think this is where we should be going and i really want to appreciate the fact that uh Accipedia patients we are also one of those communities that uh well for turn you know because we've got about six thousand applications i mean all over the world so mm -hmm. out of six thousand they have these external bodies external uh uh agencies that have been working with communities and reading they read all the stories people send and so for you to be narrowed down to one of the Andrides, uh, 115 that were chosen finally, I think it's, it's because Quite uh, they felt that we are doing something good and I really want to appreciate. And I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a community, it's not about me, I'm just there as one of you to represent us, but it's about our community because without all of us working together, without you Vera being there, without all the other moderator all of you doing this is i mean we will not be where we had today so it's not about dr baby it's about all of you it's about you kadija it's at any case about you gloria it's about you vera you are the one it is our community and we are the one that make it happen and so thank you so much i i know i've not i need to really thank my team you know many people were asking me how are you able to run your team you are here and I like I can run my team from anywhere in the world, yeah. and I, <laughs> I yeah. know that I, yeah, you guys are the most amazing, the most organized uh, team ever. Thank and you. Thank the, you. People were willing, people were, were ready to listen to our story and how do we run our group? How do we get motivated? How do I keep people? Uh, uh, doing all these things without paying them a single dime. I told them nobody is on salary on access to the patients. Everybody is doing it and they love doing what they're doing. And that is the story. Every, people, because people have a lot of issues of burnout or a lot of people who are not committed. Volunteers. So it was an opportunity for me to tell them about the, the most committed team ever. Yeah, you guys don't get a single dime. And sincerely, this is not uh, rhetoric. You guys know me. I, I don't like being flattery, but I, I, I mean, I'm really, really impressed. And people were like taking note of how, what do you do to keep your team motivated? Because I think we have one of the largest team of moderators. I told them we have over 200 people at any single time and sometimes when we go for outreaches we have over like uh, 500 volunteers who are doing so much and some of you have never met you and you know what is so inspiring to me people who send me messages and say dr baby thank you for giving me the opportunity to volunteer thank you for giving me the opportunity to... i i i will i know like i'm like really i should be the one thanking you for key into this vision for being part of what i'm doing for giving your time without getting yeah, anything yeah, but I think people must say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, yeah, so thank you so much. It's been so so, uh, and I've met so many incredible people, so many amazing people, and I want to thank those of us from Nigeria, met Anike and met Lola, in wonderful ladies, in wonderful things. And I think if we continue like this, our country will be a better place. So thank mm. you so much for all the ACP volunteers. You guys made it happen. You guys made it happen. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Dr. Interestingly, yeah. we, we should say thank you to you too because yeah. um, we had fun in the past four days. We saw everything. I mean, so, let's say some things. Of course, we didn't see everything. We didn't see the same. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we can't share we have fun. because of yeah because there's some uh, Facebook has some limit to what we can share, so we couldn't go live mm -hmm. during the sessions and things like that. But at least I was able fine. to do one live fine. video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Mm -hmm. cool. thank, thank you, you so mm -hmm. much, Doctor. Uh, so beautiful to hear um, your stories. We appreciate you. Okay, today is open house, and it's um, ask the pediatricians live. So. You should um, ask your questions, and well, you can still bring in your congratulatory messages. That's beautiful. 
But um, you can Thank ask you, your medical Bobby. questions. Dr. Boyede is here to respond to your questions. Um, moderators, please check the watch party if you have questions there already. And then please um, post as usual. All right, um, viewers. Um, okay. You should ask questions now. Thank you so much, Dr. Boyede. Someone is saying, uh, okay. Gloria, <laughs> <laughs> thank Gloria, you. about your attire. Yeah. Right. Truly, truly. <laughs> you know, I had the options of, you know, initially I was like, should I just do ATP t shirts? Then after a while, Facebook was like, they are tired of everybody wearing their logos. They want us to wear something else. And then I was just like, I need to showcase my community. I need to let them know this is Nigeria. And everybody was like, oh, I love your outfit. And they, they can see that this is Nigeria. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's a statement. I'm deliberately trying to make a statement that you we made it. are here. Yeah, yeah. And this is how community. And the same thing, my sisters from Pakistan, from Indonesia, so people with hijab and all that. So, everybody's like it's a word it is not only about this particular color it's not only about this particular gender and you know the world wants us to uh, some people want us to think that oh the world we're against each other the black the white the, the christian the muslim no in that group we have as diverse as possible kind of people and yes we all connected because we are all doing something for the good of the world whether it is I mean, something that's, that's in indonesia yeah uh, yeah who is trying to help women connect or whether it's speaking in india like adonika who is teaching mothers how to breastfeed their baby well you know people from uk from every part of the ecuador there are some countries i'm sorry that's the first time i'm hearing the name <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yes, everybody is everybody is doing so much good. And we, we it's as if you've known them before and we are just meeting for the first time, but because we all resonate, we all have a common story, and everybody is about selflessness. Everybody is doing these things, not getting anything from government or for we're just doing it to make the world a better place. So it's, it's quite amazing. It's quite amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Dr. Bede, thank you so much for um, you. this very beautiful welcome note. Viewers, um, it's ATP Live and it's open house for the month of October. So you're free to ask all your questions, all your medical questions. I mean, in relation to children. So every question you should be asking this morning could be anything, jaundice, um, stooling, malaria, whatever questions you have for Dr. Boyede, she's here to attend to all of your questions live. So we're looking forward to having more comments, share the videos. Let's see if we have anyone asking Dr. Boyede any question this morning. It seems to be a day for accolades. <laughs> <laughs> I think the moderators are saying people are still celebrating you. Maybe we should just leave it at celebration for the next two minutes until we get questions. <laughs> it's okay. It's it's so pronounced. Anything is possible. Anything. Can, okay, that's can, beautiful. You can if you can also give us feedback. You can give us comments if you think there's something we should be doing. Uh, something yeah. you would like to see on ACP that you are not yet seeing, please feel free to let us know. We are very open to, if you think there's something, maybe the way we do our moderation, the way we run the growth, yes. anything at yeah. all, any feedback yeah. is welcome. Uh, in whatever yeah. way, yeah, we want to, we want to know. Yeah, we want to know, yeah. So, uh, so we're waiting for your question. Okay. So, far no. to say, let's no. have a break. Well, <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so what I'll just do is to try and be showing you some of the pictures oh, of, amazing. of awesome. what went through. Yeah. So this is the, unfortunately, we're not able to meet Mark. I guess he has so much ongoing right now. Uh, but this is uh, Cheryl, uh, which is, who is the, like, next in command to Mark. That's the chief operating officer of uh, Facebook, mm -hmm. and she was with us. And I must say something about Facebook leaders and Facebook staff. We're opportunity to meet all of them, um, most of them, them not all of them. So we met Sherry, the CEO. We met Chris Arnels, who is the uh, head of WhatsApp. We met the head of yeah. Instagrams, and you know, so we met them. All of them at different points. We met the VP, Ime, Achibound. And one thing I will say about all of them is the fact that they are incredibly humble people. 
these people yeah. come to you i mean these are people that are worth millions and billions in dollars these are i mean you know but they are incredibly simple they're incredibly humble they're incredibly down to heart you know and they are incredibly uh grateful people if you see the way they were telling us thank you thank you i'm like seriously we <laughs> we are the one that should be thanking you for the opportunity you're giving to us but they are the ones saying everybody comes thank to you and you know you will think that okay maybe this person is just the, this person is just a nice person but i see it as like across board from More like this, a tradition yes even from dt the head of uh who put together the the community partnership the fclp program to sarah who was our uh the who was putting up the leadership training and on and stuff like that everybody all the team avani avani made me send my name the pronunciation of my name to her so that she can learn how to pronounce my name properly and she was wow. looking for me to help you know these people are just so incredibly amazing and, and i was like did they give them a vaccine in facebook that make everybody so nice <laughs> i i you know i can understand that you can have some nice people that then there should be some people that you know maybe they are grouchy kind of people but I, I didn't see everybody is so nice everybody's so energetic everybody's smiling everybody is ready to help you you know answer your questions do whatever so it's so 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 amazing it is so 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 amazing because these are people like you know on facebook money is not their problem they have food you, they give you the breakfast your dinner there's always food <laughs> there's always food there's always snacks that is people these people and i'm like i was asking one of my colleagues like what is these people spend their money on anyway because in their campus <laughs> they have, yeah because they have everything there and they have access to so much and yes yeah, so but yet you know they they, they, they are so come. down to heart i i don't hear nothing and they make us feel like we are the celebrities you know they send us shuffles to pick us on the hair part they were like everybody come up and the first thing they want to do is to say thank you for what you're doing thank you you are the one that make us feel like you know so it's so amazing it's so 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 amazing and it's also amazing yeah. connecting with other leaders i think our questions are beginning to come up so i will, I will let so we don't miss out okay yes um, Esther Damilola Kalejaye, she's saying um, a baby of three weeks passes to stool frequently, sometimes after feeding. She's on EBF, doesn't think, doesn't look like, and it looks like a goosey, which is normal. I'm just worried about the frequency. Okay, uh, thank you, Esther. One so, of yeah, so Esther, your baby passes two, three times is perfectly normal. Like if you are, I, I, I like the fact that you did a very beautiful description of the stool, and I like the fact that you yourself were able to say that the stool is normal, which is normal. which is quite good. So the only thing you are worried about is the frequency. So normally babies pass stools eight to twelve times a day. So in fact, they can pass over surely each time you feed them. So your three times a day. Uh, how many times a day did you say she passed the stool? uh you didn't say how many times but okay eight to twelve times a day is normal so you don't need to worry they can pass to each time they breastfeed the most important thing really is the consistency of this too as long as it is not watery as long as it is normal normal consistency and all that then there's no need for you to worry about hmm. the frequency all right thank you for asking your okay question. Oh, is okay now she sounds she seems like um, a a very active atp member she, yeah. she, she asked her questions well <laughs> quite impressive yeah. these yeah. are the kind of things you see you know that yes we're really making impact well yeah. done do we have any other question now i think we have some questions on the watch party moderators gloria i can see you're online please check khadijat karim please check the watch party we have questions there kindly help do a transfer okay me or more good i can see you're also online Okay, Dr. Boyle, before the next question comes, I want to say something. Um, talking about what you said, how they were like, ah, how are you able to do things when you're not in Nigeria you're not, and all of that? And I'm like, okay, the answer is this. I hope you gave them the answer. That you have built a system. I've told you you should do, do well to write a book on systems because 
if if anytime I think of a, of someone or a leader who has built a good system, I think of you, and that's like okay, I'm not. Of course, you know I'm not flattering you, but that's just the truth. And um, yeah. so next time when you when you get such a question, please just put the end. It's a simple line. You have built a system. Well done. Ma. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's I, I did. I did tell them. You know, I I told them the important thing. I spend more time developing the leaders around me, uh, replicating the passion in them. And like I did tell you guys, you guys can run ATP without me. I mean, you guys have yeah. gotten to that level. I was telling people that for the first time we were able to do our outreaches in multiple locations. And it was so successful. And many people didn't even realize that Dr. Gumi is not in the country. And you guys, yourself, Dr. Rotsimi, uh, Dr. Walma, you, 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 you did it. And, and I think for me, that is the height of fulfillment, the height of leadership, that whether I'm there or not there, my community can run. And, and, and it's one of, you know, because I attended one of those, uh, what we call the like open, space open discussion where people will decide which topic they want us to talk about and um, one of those topics was team building and i was able to yeah. share this with them that i've been able to build my team and that is the joy for me so it is beyond me it's gone wrong and i was telling them I've, I've been here for four days i've not even had much time apart from sharing my pictures and stuff to <laughs> <laughs> to, check, to, to, to check back with what is happening in the community and yes the community is i, I was mm. so sure it's wrong. nothing's crashing i was so damn sure of it and you know so and i was able to share some of those things with them and it's so amazing yeah okay dr Brady, i think um i might just need to go on the watch party to get some questions um yes emily ibiatari yeah. asherbi she's asking the question she says, what could be done to a 16-month-old baby baby boy whose penis size hasn't increased in size since he was born? Hormonal tests have been done and the hormonal levels are normal. Okay, so I'm not so sure what the current size is and why you're worried about it, but I can imagine that if you are already doing hormonal tests, it means you are seeing pediatric endocrinologists. So I would just say, just keep seeing them. Obviously, the most important thing is that they are, I mean, the tests you are doing are normal. And so, uh, so keep seeing the pediatric endocrinologists. They will keep monitoring the baby and keep measuring the size. So if you're on ACP, if you want to post it, you can tag Dr. Walma. I mean, but okay. I guess you're already seeing them offline which is the most important thing. So I think you should just continue doing that. Okay. I have another question already on the group, Vera. Um, okay. I think it's Damilola giving us feedback. Yeah. Okay, okay. She said, thank you very much. I figured as much, just needed a confirmation. I'm a very active member and a doctor as well, but I've learned so much more. Wow, from the group. Please keep up the good work. Thank you again. Okay, that's is amazing. If you're, if you're a doctor, then you should be volunteering for us as a moderator, a professional. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in, yeah, I know there are different levels of doctors, so you may just be a general practitioner, maybe not a pediatrician, but if you're interested in volunteering for us, uh, you're more than welcome. Yeah. Okay, yes. Um, okay, Dr. Barry, we have a question from Samson Durojaye from the Watch Party. He's saying, okay, he has two questions. He says, how is referral system in Nigeria? And then how can we use social media to market less recognized health professionals? Mm -hmm. Open house. Okay, okay. health system in Nigeria is a three-layer or three-tiered system. So you have the primary health care system, then you have the secondary health care system and the tertiary health care system. I don't know what you... Um, why are you asking the question? Maybe if you specify, then I can provide further information. But uh, the second part of your question is uh, professionals are not supposed to be marketed. We are not. It's against the ethics of medicine, so we shouldn't market healthcare professionals. Uh, we can talk about health issues, we can talk about, uh, but health professionals are not 
to advertise and they are not to market themselves. So that's just an extra side. That's why you don't see doctors or hospitals being marketed because if you do, the Medical Council of Nigeria, uh, Medical and Dental Council, will come after you because you are breaking the ethics of medicine here. Yeah, so that's how wow. it is. Okay, that's good learning for everyone. So, Dr. Brady has said that. I'm sure you, you got that. Um, okay, we have Folu Shaws. Okay, she got this from the watch party, apparently. I have a nine-year-old son who is always having nose bleeding since the beginning of this se section, session, I believe. It has happened close to four times. What do you suggest we do? This is from Amanda Obiora Ibikwe. Yeah, okay. Some children do have, um, thank you, Amanda. Uh, some children do have nose bleeding. The most important thing for you to learn is what is causing the nose bleeding. Majority of the time, there's no cause, it's what we call it hepatic. But the most important thing for you to learn as a mom is how to stop the bleeding. So there's a posture. Most mothers always do the upper. Uh, turn the head up. Actually, that is wrong. So you, you just to keep the head down and to pinch the nose. So if you go on Facebook uh, group and you type nose bleeding, you it yeah. will bring up that picture of how to pinch the nose. Or sometimes you can use ice block for it to stop. Unfortunately, some of them, if it's the one that is due to no raising, the idiopathic one, it can keep on happening until the child has grows it. But if there are other reasons, you may want to see your ENT doctors. Like for some people that uh, pick on their nose, tends to have nose bleeding. So you may want to um, you may want to see an ENT doctor for for that uh, evaluation. Let them just check that there is no other reason why your child is having nose bleeding. If there is no other reason. They will just tell you what to do when it happens, and that is it. But most children eventually will outgrow it, so you don't need to worry. All right, thank you so much. Obiara, I'm sure you got that. Okay, this is from Joey, Joe Anuri. My daughter of two years plus is always sweating. At the same time, she's always having cold. That is cough and kata frequently. How do I manage manage it? Um I don't understand the why you are connecting the sweating and the cup and kind of because it shows that you think that your child having cup and kind of is because of the environmental temperature. So so number one, cover cold, cold or kata is they are caused by germs, they are caused by either viruses or bacteria. So it's just that mm -hmm. it's easier for it to happen. There are some kind of cold that happen during when the weather temperature, you know, those viruses thrive when the temperatures are down. But it's, so it is not the covering per se that is cause, uh, not or the exposure per se that is causing the, the what we call the respiratory infection itself. The infection is caused by germs, either viruses or bacteria. When it has happened, it has happened. And if it's a viral infection, it will run its course. Until it has finished running its course, even if you keep covering the child, the the the, mm -hmm. the cough and kata will go on until it stops. Yeah. But the most important, which is a bacterial one, until the child takes antibiotics, it will not stop. So the most important thing is not to is not the covering. I say that one is more for the prevention. But once it has happened, it's to make sure that it is what kind of area. If the child is having fever and it's breathing fast, so you know you need to take to the hospital. That may be a likely bacteria respiratory infection but if the child is not having fever the child is just having cough cold is most likely <clears throat> a viral one so you just give the child one give lots of fluids it will run it's cause it is run it's cause so this kind of does it uh the most important thing is the prevention uh how old is your child two years old make sure your child is immunized make sure you keep people that have viral infections away, you know, which means that even your child, when they are sick, you keep them at home instead of taking them to hospital because that is, they get it from other children as well. So those are the things you can do. Yeah. But once it happens, you're covering the child and making the child sweat will not treat the cough or cancer itself. Yeah, because the virus or it's a bacterial infection. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Boyedi. Um, I'm sure you got that. Um, keep your child warm. Ruth. Okay, this is from Ruth Ame. 
How can I treat ring warm in my 55 days old baby? I'm already administering tributan cream for babies and flucamid. But I'm worried because that was the same drug that was administered three weeks ago when it first showed up, but it's back again. Please help. <laughs> uh, Ruth, I'm not sure your baby has ring warm. Number one, ring warm is so unusual in the two, your baby is about two months old or three months, I mean, two months old. Yes, uh, yeah. yeah, so that is very unusual to happen. Uh, it could, I'm not saying your baby doesn't have a skin rash or a skin infection or, or maybe. A skin condition but you are the one assuming number one those drugs you are even using like flucamide and all that they are too this is steroid containing too strong for a two-month-old baby yeah. so and this is one of the things we preach against an acp please avoid self-medication uh triple sand yeah. flucamide their medications and you should be very careful and if for example it is not a ringworm which is what i'm thinking it is not and you are using something for ringworm, then you, are, you can actually worsen it. If you are using steroid for something like this bacteria, for example, you are going to worsen it. And sometimes there are some rashes in babies that don't even require any treatment. Sometimes the child is reacting, it's an allergy, maybe to the cream or the soap that you're using. And all you need to do is to stop it. Or some babies have what we call uh, sensitive skin. So you need to use products that don't contain too much of chemicals. And now what you are doing is able to be given all these drugs are loads of chemical for a baby because at that age, their skin is so fragile, so light. Anything you put on it is absorbed into their system. And you have been using this for, I don't know, you said three weeks ago, which means you started when your baby was about a month old. Yes. So I'm, I am quite worried about that. So I think you really need to... Uh, you need to stop it and then sorry yes, okay all right so um olufumi um ruth ame that's the way they are said stop it and um you might just have to see a, a dermatologist because we we always frown at um, self-medication and ask the pediatrician so that's what you're doing I'm sure you've gotten the message from Dr. Brady. Stop whatever you're using right now and see a dermatologist. I'm sure a pediatric dermatologist will be able to advise you further. And then you said something about that sometimes Dr. Brady always tells us that even if you were at, a drug was administered by a doctor and then you have you assume you have the same condition, then you go and get this drug yourself. I mean, that's also self-medication and it is wrong. So Dr. Brady is back, she'll continue to register. Okay. Are you, are you all right? You're changing your position, I suppose. Sorry, sorry for the break in transmission. Um, viewers, just um, stay on. Dr. Brady will be with us shortly. Yes, she's back. All right. Good to have you back. Chichi Gerald Uwoji. A one-year-old son is always having ball. Haven't given antibiotics yet, still coming out and it's itches him. What can I do? Okay, so I will suggest that you uh see your doctor for treatment. Yeah, so that he can give it the right. Um, you know, depends on the cause of the infection. So maybe the 
bacterial entrance system. So you need to see a doctor who will give you the right treatment. Doctor Berry, please can you can you be a lot more audible? Sorry. Yeah. Um sorry, I'm in a place where it's so difficult to be too loud. <laughs> I, 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 okay, I get that, I get that, I get that. Okay, so um, Chichi Gerald Uwoji, you just heard Dr. Boyede now. She said um, there might be some form of antibiotic um, resistance. So she advises that you see your doctor again um, and then see a pediatrician again, please, if you haven't seen one. Might need to do a change or something. Okay, Siwe Franca. What can I use for my baby's skin? He's having a reddish color on his skin, popularly known as Ilapu in Yoruba language. It's a fungi infection. I've used mycotin and Zora. No improvements. Please, Ma, what else can I use? Thank you, Ma. Um, this is from Siwe Franca. I would say don't use anything else, but see your pediatrician for further treatment. Yeah. Our oh, That's the best thing to do. Yeah. Okay, see, we you just got that now. Stop all you're using. See your pediatrician. Yes, you might complicate the issues more if you self-medicate. That's what we always advise on. Ask the pediatricians. All right. Um, more questions, please. Okay, that's this is from Paula Kemi Ayejola Bailey. When do I start brushing my baby's mouth? I noticed using towel and water really didn't help because tones, I see white, okay, maybe sometimes I see white patches around the mouth. He's nine months old. Okay, so you really need to start using, um, if your baby already has teeth, you need to use toothbrush and toothpaste. So that's what you need to use. And, um, these white patches, I'm not sure what they have, whether it's a fungal infection, because if you're using it too well, you need to make sure you wash it and use fresh one every day. So maybe you have been using the same old one all the time. So if you start using brush and toothpaste, and they see your doctor about the white patches for, props, for proper treatment. Yeah. Okay, thank you, ma'am. So um, see your doctor, use age appropriate toothpaste and brush now. That's what Dr. Brady has just said to you for La Kemi Ayejola. Yeah, that, that, that's that question you just answered already. Okay, hello Ma. This is from Victoria Ogunwinde. Is it normal if a child is going frequently to pee? She wants to know if um, a child pees frequently. She wants to know if it's normal. How frequently is frequently here? So we need to know how how many times in a, in one hour or how many times in a day. So you need to be more specific of going day so that we can answer that question. But like okay. if that is going to be like every two two minutes, every four five minutes, that's too frequent. That may suggest uh, urinary tract infection, and that you really need to go and see your doctor yeah, for treatment. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, this this question has been answered already. Dr. Brady already said to something. Okay, that's the same question. We just we just got the question already. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Mide is asking, what advice do you have for mothers who force feed babies who won't eat? Stop. She wants to know. Stop. <laughs> they should just stop it because it is very wrong and it's dangerous. So they should just stop it. That's the advice. Yeah. So Mide, the way they say stop it, it's dangerous. If you go on our group, you would find some tips on how to feed babies who naturally don't want to eat. I mean children who are not so inclined to eating. If you go on the Facebook on our Facebook group, you use the search button and um um um, type picky eaters or tips for picky eaters or something, you'll get some tools on how to get um, your child to eat better. But stop force feeding. So let's see if we have any other question. 
Emmanuel Naomi saying to the village, it's tapping for you, Dr. Brady. Well done. Chizoba Luwala. Please, ma, my baby of five weeks always cry of stomach pain. I don't sleep because of the sleeplessness. Please, is there any remedy to stop the pain? When will the pain stop? I'm worried for Mrs. Juliana. Okay, okay, that sounds like your baby is having colic. Uh, so yeah. uh, colic is common in babies at that age. So don't worry, don't panic. And uh, it will stop by the time baby is about three months old. Uh, so I will encourage you to hang in there. There are simple methods you can use to lock the baby, breastfeed, and all that. But usually, most babies we have it. You can try things like infacol. It may be helpful. Sometimes it doesn't help. But within three months, most babies will stop having colic. So you can rest assured. So just hang in there for now. Yeah. Okay, Chizaba, you got that. Hang in there. The baby's just having colic. So the community has told you what to do. You can also still go on the group and type on colic um, on the search bar, type colic, and you get more information. It's not a problem. It would um, resolve on its own. Okay, um, Victoria Gurindi. Okay, she's asked, we've, Dr. Bode has answered this question already. Okay, she wants to know if it is hereditary. Dr. Bode, no. the person who talked about our son's frequent pee is asking if it is hereditary. It is not. It is not hereditary for a baby to pass stones frequently. So the most important thing is to know why. And uh, you have not really been specific about how frequent is this frequently. So it's difficult for me to advise. But if you think it's too frequent, then you need to see a doctor, preferably a pediatrician, so that they can uh, uh, investigate for possible urinary tract infection, and then they will tell you what to do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Brady. Um, Okay, we've seen this question before. Hikachi's question has been answered. All right, there's another one here. Um, a boss said, it, I did it July. Term. Good morning, ma. Please, what can I use for boil in a four month old baby? I just noticed it this morning. It's still very small, though. And what is the cause of boil in babies? Uh -huh. Okay, most boils and babies are due to bacterial infection. Uh, most likely, uh, different bacteria. Let me not go into the names of the bacteria. So what you need to right. do is to uh, take the baby to see a doctor because the child may require antibiotics. And we don't prescribe antibiotics online. We can't tell you which antibiotics to use. So you need to see your own personal doctor who will give you that prescription. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Boyede. So I'm sure you heard that. Um, you need to go to the hospital to see your doctor. She needs to tell you what to do. And like I said also, for all of these questions, um, Dr. Boyede is answering you live and giving you your direct responses today. But for more information, more um, to read more on whatever your questions are, just go on our Facebook group, Type the keyword to your question, and you see loads of articles, loads of group discussions, loads of information that would be very useful to you. All right, so she's about um, Luala. Okay, she's asking again. My baby of five weeks always cry. Okay, we've said that already. Some people said I should apply Vaseline Blue Steel. No, don't do anything. Dr. Brady already told you. Don't do anything. It's colic. It, it will resolve on its own. Just um, keep breastfeeding your baby. And um, like she said, you can use Infacol if you want to, but not so necessary. But um, it, it, will, it will resolve on its own. Um, Chisab, I want to encourage you to go on the group. You will, you'll be happy to read um, about colleague and you'll get more information yeah. you would enjoy. All right? Okay. Okay. Um, Victoria Agurinde, she's replied to your, um, the first question she asked, Dr. Boyle, you asked her how frequent is the P, and she's saying like like five times in one hour. That, that's very frequent. That's very frequent. So you need to say, doctor, quickly. Yeah. Victoria Gourinde, Dr. Boyle just said that's quite frequent, so you need to see a doctor, I mean, to, to be sure everything is in order. 
I'm trying to, um, um, I, I need you to hear that's so why I'm taking the okay, Dr. Okwe Asho Ihejoa. My three year old was tooling about four for about four days, he was on ORS and still on zinc. But in the last three days, he hasn't pulled at, at all, although he farts and it's very smelly. I just want to know if it's okay to give him fresh orange juice. That's from okay. Ashu. Yeah, you can give him, he's fine, but I don't know why you're worried now because if he was passing frequent so now you maybe has stopped passing. <laughs> <laughs> that's the average Nigerian mom or that's the average mother. <laughs> oh, yeah, no worries. So just just let him be. It's okay. But you can pack, you can give him a ring. She's fine. Yeah. Okay. So okay. That way there's a lady of fears. She says um you can give him her um the orange if you want to. It's all right, no problems at all. Thank you, Dr. Boyede. Um Emily Ibiatali. At what age do babies start talking and stop babbling? A baby one year plus. From okay, I think year. a baby is one year plus and mm, maybe not yeah, talking baby, yet. Yeah, baby should stop, uh, uh, should start having one to three words by the time they're about one year old. So your baby should have at least one to three words, either mama, baba, things like that. So that's what we expect from your one year old baby, they are not going to start talking full sentences at one year, but they can do single words like mama, papa, and things like that. Yeah, okay. So, Emily, you got that. So, your baby should be saying a few words, one or two words now. All right, um, or more pariola or lying. Please, how can someone treat bronchial pneumonia in a five month old baby? Ha. On exclusive and not exposed, how can someone treat bronchial pneumonia? <laughs> Who made the diagnosis of bronchial pneumonia? <laughs> well, that was my thoughts too. <laughs> so I, I know it's not you because you shouldn't make that diagnosis. So if the diagnosis is made by your doctor, that same doctor should tell you what to treat or how to treat it. So please don't make the diagnosis. Don't assume it's bronchial pneumonia. See your doctor first and let them make the diagnosis and then they will also tell you the truth. Thank you, doctor. Mama Parela, you got that. See your doctor. Don't make don't make assumptions assumptions on your own. Um, you need to see your doctor and um, do whatever you are told to do by your doctor. If you trust your doctor enough, if you do not, you may need to change your hospital. Afe Olua Fumilola Ines, baby of eight months experiences Qatar frequently. What can be done? Why is the baby experiencing Qatar frequently? Is the first thing to address. So you need to keep your baby warm. I hope you're breastfeeding. I hope you're not taking baby to crash and you're maybe exposing baby to uh, people who have kata and cough and things like that. So take care of the prevention first. And if it is still not going, then you need to see your pediatrician. Yeah, well done. Okay, Afair, you heard that. Dr. Boyede just answered your question. She's saying, um, you need to keep, I, she's hoping you're still breastfeeding your baby because that's very important. And then also exposure. I hope your baby is not also exposed to people with um, the viral infection and all of that. And then the way says, if it persists, you should see your doctor, very important. But sometimes it could just be a viral infection that would um, go on its own. But okay, you said frequently, so you must see your doctor. Thank you. Merci, Ogechuku. My baby of eight months rejects milk, pap, and serilac. She only eats adult food and breast milk. Mm. Is it okay to feed her just adult food or cooked food along with breast milk? Perfectly okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very smart it's, child. <laughs> that's the kind of baby we want. That's the best. Yes. Thing. So we don't As I saw this, I said this is not really this kind. Yeah. And you should, you should go and watch all the... Uh, nutrition one or two courses videos you will realize that your baby is the most perfectly normal baby ever that's what we want so true, it's not compulsory your baby to take any of those stuff boxes and food or anything like that yeah lovely so the uh, messi ogechuku dr Boyede is very proud of your baby and she's very excited your baby is the ideal baby so please go on our group um check our unit courses you have loads of information. There's, there are videos there for um, nutri nutritious foods that you can give to this exceptional child. Um, well done. Thank you. 
Messi, I'm sure you, you have your answers now. Um, yeah. Do we have more questions as we're rounding off briefly? I think um, we have about four minutes to the end of the show. It appears there are a lot of questions on the watch party. Um, but we'll be rounding off soon, definitely. Dr. Brady, you have answered so many questions within one art. Well done, man. Thank you very much. I'm very sorry mm -hmm. about the voice because I'm in the hotel yes, and, yes. and I don't and. want to, um, it's actually about 3 a.m. here in the U.S. So I don't want to be disturbing yeah, my neighbors. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, uh, yes, hopefully yes. we can, so soon I have a back home then we can make all the noise. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, very well understandable. I hope heard what Dr. Brady just said. It's 3 a.m. where she is, and then she's um, in the hotel. So, of course, she, she would need to be very careful so she doesn't disturb her neighbors. And we're happy she... Dr. Brady is um, awake at 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. to answer our questions. Dr. Brady, this is what we're talking about. God bless your passion. Thank you very much. <laughs> we appreciate you. We really do. We really do. Thank you so much. Okay, so do we have any more questions um, as we round off this show today? Okay, let me just tell you, um, of course, some of us are just joining in. This is um, Ask the Pediatricians Live, ATP Live, brought to you by Ask the Pediatricians Foundation. Every um, week, Dr. Brady is here, our pediatric consultant, to respond to questions from um, mothers, fathers, and carers of children. She gives... Um, 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 what's the word? Evidence-based responses to questions that are asked by anyone who come online to watch us. So we're excited. We've done. We've we've been on the on live on the live show for about an hour, and we're rounding off now. So if you do not know so much about what we do, kindly go on Facebook and search for Ask the Pediatricians. That's our Facebook group. And then click the join button. Um, our moderators will be ready to accept you into the group. And then please read our instructions or rather our guidelines, okay, how, how we operate, and then we're able to answer your questions. Write your questions on the group wall. If your questions are sensitive, you might want to send an email to ask at askthepediatricians.com. Recently, we, we get feedback from people saying um, the, the, the emails are bouncing. No. The, the spelling for the pediatricians is not P-E-A, but P-A-E, ask the pediatricians. And then there is an S, all right? So we have ask at askthepediatricians.com. So your, your anonymous questions that are quite sensitive can come in as email. And then for general questions, please drop them on the wall and we're sure to respond to you within 72 hours. Um, any final words for me, Dr. Boyd? It appears this is already time. And yeah. thank you so much, everyone, for yeah, really the final to, words, please. Yes, I want to say thank you so much, Vera. You have been so amazing. I mean, you've told them everything. I just want to say thank you, all of you, and thank you for supporting Acts of Pediatricians. And if you have you. family members, um, colleagues, you know can benefit from our group, kindly add them to the group. And if you have corporate bodies that can sponsor our ATP Life, kindly get in touch with us and we'll see so that we can partner together to make sure that we reduce child death. That's our focus on ATP. So I really want to appreciate you once again and apologize for the low volume of my voice because I, I, I don't want to be disturbing my neighbors. Thank you so much for the That's fine. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure the viewers, are, 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 they understand that perfectly. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Okwe. Thank you, Fulusho. God bless you. Have a nice day um, until we'll see you next week. Dr. Murray, they do have a safe flight back to base. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, viewers. Thank you.